Good morning, beautiful family. Here is a very special person in my life. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Thompson of the National Centre for Integrative Medicine in Bristol, but I do happen to be George's mum as well. So this is mum, and we're going to go on an adventure today, right? Where are we going? To one of my favourite places, the Bristol Botanic Gardens. Right, let's go. So I guess the thing that interests me about going to a botanics garden is the fact that our ancestors had knowledge of all these plants and herbs that do actually have medical qualities. And they're not just kind of witch doctor serums. They had knowledge of how nature could actually support us medically. Yes, that bit is fascinating. So science is really proving the benefits of some of these plants, but um, that knowledge was there beforehand. Mm. So, you know, there's this interesting plant called the scurvy plant um, that the local people, as the sailors got off long voyages, would know to give to them to eat a bit. But science has shown that it's got some of the highest levels of vitamin C in any plant. So that is fascinating and a little bit magical that people would know these benefits. Uh, welcome, my name's uh, Nick Ray and I'm curator here at the University of Bristol Botanic Garden. This is a fantastic uh, teaching and research resource for the University of Bristol, but also for the citizens of Bristol. The Botanic Garden was founded by a German man called Adolf Leibner, and he founded the garden uh, along with two colleagues in 1882. Four and a half thousand different species of plant from all around the world are used for teaching uh, and research from school children, through field courses, study courses, specialist courses, all the way through uh, to just enjoying the garden. Nice picnic. A couple of years ago, um, I came to the botanics and interestingly, none of the medical undergraduates were using the botanic gardens as a teaching resource. So what's been exciting is to set up teaching modules that include visits to the botanic gardens so that um, the students can really learn more about the history of herbalism and how it very much informed our lives as modern doctors. So George, this beautiful daisy, it's one of the daisy family and there are lots of different daisies but this is the very beautiful echinacea and for hundreds of years it's been used to support the immune system, obviously 150 years ago we wouldn't have known it as the immune system, but it has been shown when you take it by mouth, particularly just at the onset of cold or flu-like illnesses, just to shorten them because it's stimulating to the immune system. It's not something to use all the time, uh, but often I will use echinacea and some vitamin C uh, to support me during uh, a cold or flu-like illness just so that I recover that little bit quicker uh, but it's a very very beautiful plant as you can see. So we're here in the western herbal garden of the Bristol Botanic Gardens you can see it's a very beautiful space and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the plants but I do need to say I am not a herbalist I'm actually a holistic doctor I trained and qualified in conventional medicine, but I was always interested in other approaches. And about four years ago, set up a new center for integrative medicine, the National Center for Integrative Medicine in Bristol, to look at how we combine conventional lifestyle and holistic approaches. Because we've got lots of things out there that we can use and that our patients and the public are using. So why not start to provide a healthcare system that really matches and mirrors what people are doing in reality. I want to show you this plant just next door to this beautiful black cohosh, which is um, a, a, a one of the rose family, you can tell from the leaves, but it's called meadowsweet. It's got a long Latin name, Philippendula or Maria. But meadowsweet has actually been used to calm the stomach. And um, what's really fascinating is this is what we get aspirin from. So Bayer, who developed aspirin many, many years ago now, derived it from this plant. And actually, curiously, because it's been derived 
pharmaceutically and a molecules being added onto uh, the, the molecules naturally found within this substance. It actually has the side effect of causing stomach problems. You probably know that if you take aspirin or aspirin-like drugs, you'll often have to take antacids as well. Um, so isn't it curious that the plant itself offers a balanced pharmacology of soothing uh, a sore and acidic stomach? But the pharmaceutical agent might actually cause that problem, even though it will then work at, at, to reduce inflammation in the body. So useful things, but maybe really good for us to know that yet again we found it from nature. So George, we're now walking into the traditional Chinese medicine garden. And the Botanic Gardens were lucky enough to have Luke Jerram, an artist. Some of you may know him because he's done these amazing, huge Gaia balls that have been hanging around the country, um, just inspiring people again to really connect to the earth and our responsibility to look after the earth. One of his pieces of art is uh, a magical door that takes us into maybe a new world, a new perspective, and uh, we've been allowed to keep it here at the Botanic Gardens. Camellia sinensis, which is the tea plant, a traditional Chinese herb that was used for medicinal and health properties for many, many years. We now know that green tea is incredibly useful as well for the body, naturally anti-inflammatory. Well, we know quite a lot about green tea. Mastagu cultivated it on the mountain and the Taoists for thousands of years understood the medical qualities of green tea that only now modern science are confirming. So as we go deeper into the garden we're going to see many peonies, sacred plants in China revered for their beauty, their flowers. And again that just reminds us that our connection to nature may not be by ingesting anything but just by experiencing beauty, harmony, green spaces. And do you know we are hardwired to feel more relaxed in the colour green. Our cortisol levels will drop even if we're shown images of green, but if we actually get out into the natural environment here, a beautiful dark green, um, then our bodies start to relax because we are hardwired to be connected to the natural world. But George, I'm really excited to show you this ginkgo tree, ginkgo biloba. It's also known as the maiden hair tree. And this is a female ginkgo. You probably recognize it from its leaves and it's put into a lot of city centers because it will naturally absorb pollution. Again, nature helping us out when we're just making a mess of things. But what's fascinating about ginkgo is that in traditional Chinese medicine, it was known to help with blood flow. So if people were having problems with blood flow, maybe um, in their limbs, then ginkgo would be used. So as a conventional doctor I'm often encouraged not to hug trees but you've got to admit this is the most beautiful tree. You can see where I get my obsession with trees from it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear dear. <laughs> I've just Mm, taken a little bit of Szechuan pepper, this incredible red pepper. So in Chinese you have ma and la. Ma is the numbing spice, like this, Szechuan pepper. <laughs> My mum's currently struggling. <laughs> and then la is the chilli spice that we're used to. But do we have uh, numbing spice in, in the West? We don't have this. Uh, obviously pepper will make us sneeze and stimulate, but this completely makes us go numb. I'm full on like a thousand ants over my lower, my lower lip, lo lower and upper lips. Mum is known to overstate pain. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure how much this is affecting me, but yeah. When me and Master Gu went to Szechuan, we went to Chengdu, the capital, and I used to in the restaurants just like pour loads of this and just like enjoy the numbing spice. Oh wow! It's I, my lips are just totally buzzing. I quite enjoy it. I get a bit of a Have kick you got out of it, it yet? Because yeah, you let may let me crunch it. Oh my god, right. <laughs> Has it started? It's begun. <laughs> so we're going to visit the hothouses and uh, in the hothouse we're going to see 
a lot of foods that we're used to, like chocolate, turmeric, ginger, cardamom. It's just fantastic to see these things growing, cinnamon bark. But we'll head in there and then see what yummy things are there for us. What is it you're doing there? Just weeding, just taking out the duckweed. Great. I'm also pruning the um, Victoria lily pads as well. So here, George, and you might be able to see the cocoa pod there. This is the chocolate tree, a very important tree for many of us. And actually, we've realized that chocolate is really good for us in its pure form. It's naturally anti-inflammatory in the body. So a bit of dark chocolate works on those little blood vessels to clean them and balance them. So we can enjoy chocolate in moderation at the right times of day and know that actually it's good for us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Delicious. Mmm, right. yum. Mm. Well, thank you, Mum. I felt like I learned a lot. You can see why it's my favourite place in Bristol. Yeah, it's beautiful. I really want to bring Master Goo here. Having the Chinese herb garden, it's amazing. I'm sure he'll really enjoy it. When you think of the diversity of plants and trees that are here, it, you know, it's just so exciting. And you can come again and again and learn new things all the time. Yeah, and it started in the 1880s. It connects me to the Victorians who also had this fascination and love of nature. And this institution is still going. I think it's an amazing thing. Yeah. So if you enjoyed what Mum talked about today, you're doing more stuff like this, or do you want to tell people in general what you're up to and how they can get in contact? Yeah, do follow us on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, the National Centre for Integrative Medicine. We're really trying to create a movement for change in healthcare to transform it into a much broader vision where we honour and respect holistic approaches, herbalism, acupuncture, traditional Chinese medicine, but also connecting to green spaces, cold water swimming, but also so just looking at conventional medicines, making sure they're right for you. And in fact, this week we're launching our holistic doctor service. So that's time and space with a qualified doctor to really look at your health needs, whether it's just an early warning sign that you're getting out of balance or whether you've got a condition that you'd really like to look at with a, a holistic uh, model. Then do visit our website, speak to our inquiries team, and find out whether this kind of approach can help you with your health and well-being. Right, well if you're interested there's links in the description and on the screen now but otherwise should we tuck into this beautiful looking lunch? Yes absolutely Let's and uh, yeah sprinkled with olive oil. Sprinkled with olive oil. Until next time.